like to welcome you to tonight's presentation. My name is Scott Horsfall and I partner with clients and clinicians at the Veterinary Medical Center to serve animals and their families. The Animal Health Education Series features our leading experts covering a variety of topics in veterinary medicine, ranging from relevant health information for your beloved pets to ways that we're advancing clinical research that will serve dogs, cats, and people for generations to come. During the presentation, you can use the Q&A function in Zoom to ask questions. We also ask for pre-submitted questions and we'll do our best to cover the themes that came up most frequently during the final portion of the program. Please note that if your question relates to your pet's specific medical care, it is best to call the VMC directly or have your primary care veterinarian contact your team for a consultation so that we can best serve your family. With that, I'd like to introduce our speaker for tonight, Dr. Choi. Dr. Choi is an associate professor in the Veterinary Clinical Sciences Department at the University of Minnesota and head of the Complementary and Alternative Medicine Service. She received a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from the University of Seoul and went on to earn a Master's of Science degree in both veterinary microbiology and oriental medicine. She later went on to earn her PhD in veterinary pathobiology and a postdoctorate in molecular biology immunology at the University of Minnesota. We're grateful to have Dr. Choi with us tonight to discuss acupuncture in a veterinary setting. With that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Choi. Good afternoon, and thanks for attending our lecture series. Today's topic is acupuncture beyond your imagination. I believe most of you have heard or experienced complementary and alternative medicine, especially acupuncture. When I started chem service at BMC 20 years ago, I spent a lot of time educating what I do and why traditional medicine is important for well-being of our four legs companion. I still vividly remember the challenges and critics but I took them as my positive input. The Western medicine is based on tangible phenomenon, but the traditional medicine deals with both intangible and tangible phenomena. Anyway, world now embrace traditional medicine or CAM more than ever. Casey, can I have the next slide? Since the time is limited, I briefly introduce the history and basics of acupuncture and finally share four cases whom I treated at the VMC. Next slide, please. To make a long story short, traditional medicine originated in China, India, Korea, and neighboring countries and has been developed through active exchanges among these regions. The history of acupuncture is much older than you can imagine. For example, stone needles were found in the northern part of Korea, which is estimated to be over around 4,000 years. And bone needles also found in China and estimated to be over 4,000 years too. In India, Ayurveda medicine has a history of over 3,000 years. The moxabustion, which is a heat treatment method, originated in Mongolia, where the climate is cold and dry. All the different forms of CAM have been uh, invented in different regions or countries. Traditional medicine is now established as a significant medical theory. The biggest reason traditional medicine has been passed down for a long time is that it has been approved as a valuable medicine through clinical outcomes. Can I have a next slide? Next slide, please. Acupuncture and oral remedies. Can I see it? Can I? Slide? Okay have been used in Asian countries to treat animal diseases, especially horses and cattle. Several books published in Korea and China about 500 to 1,000 years ago shows that 
acupuncture and herbal remedies were used as main medical modality for horses, cattle, and sheep. Modern veterinary acupuncture has been established on the basis of these books. Next slide, please. So, um, Western medicine and traditional medicine are two distinct and divergent medicines. The approaches to philosophy, ideology, diagnosis, and treatment are quite different in perspective. There are several fundamental differences between traditional medicine and Western medicine. Traditional medicine sees a patient as a whole, whereas Western medicine focuses the patient ideology on local or cellular level in the body. Most of the sources used as therapeutic agent in traditional medicine are natural, such as food, herbs, acupuncture, qigong, chai chi, yoga, and so on. But Western medicine uses frequently synthetic chemicals as a drug chemotherapy. Sometimes we are using very aggressive treatment like uh, surgery, radiation therapy, and so on. Traditional medicines observes the phenomena of the patient total life while Western medicine examines structure and the biochemical changes at the organ or cellular level. While traditional medicine provides uh, customized treatment, Western medicine is a more generalized treatment. So one mode is generally suitable for all. Traditional medicine is designed as preventive medicine while Western medicine is a vaccine-derived de defense medicine. Traditional medicine considers the underlying cause, but Western medicine treats the symptom. So between traditional medicine and Western medicine, there is a pro and cons. So main differences is that the concept of qi, an intangible entity, does not exist in mainstream traditional uh, Western medicine theory. Can see, can I have the next one? Okay. So, the qi. Qi is the fundamental concept of traditional medicine. What is the qi? Can you see the qi? Can you touch the qi? Can you hear the qi? Can you smell the qi? Qi was created from the birth of the universe. The universe, qi exists billions of years. And even today, the same qi exists. And we are always influenced by it. Qi has been called by various names, such as energy, life force, bioelectric force, vital force, or intangible entity. From the traditional medicine point of view, there are two main types of Qi in the body. Those are prenatal Qi and postnatal Qi. Prenatal Qi is the constitutional essence from the parents and postnatal chi is our basic daily energy we make every day. Uh, we generate it through, through our diet, the food, breathing, the air, and lifestyle. So food, air, and lifestyle are very important for your you know, general health. Chi is constantly scattered and gathered. That's why sometimes you can see the chi, or sometimes you cannot see the chi. When the chi is condensed, it appears in visual form, tangible form. When it is scattered, it becomes intangible form, or it exists as a light. So when it becomes intangible form, people just don't believe the chi. They only believe the, uh, what they see. As I mentioned earlier, the biggest differences between Western medicine and traditional medicine is whether chi is accepted or not in their theory. Can I have a next slide? OK. 
Okay. So um, the next important theory is in traditional medicine, the concept of yin and yang. Thousand years ago, ago scholars and philosophers found creation of the universe by observation, by the eye and the thinking and philosophy. Before the universe was created, it was in a state of infinity, like a black circle. You see that in the slides. After one big, can you go back? After one big explosion, there was a darkness and light, so-called yin and yang. If you know about the uh, Big Bang theory, you will notice that this is very similar theory. And the cheese always existed since the first explosion with various forms. Like Einstein theory, energy, chi, is mass are uh, in interchangeable. They are different forms of the same thing. Under the right conditions, energy can become a mass and vice versa or phenomenon in the universe is placed in yin and yang category. Next slide, please. So yin and yang have its own quality showing totally opposite character. Since yang has heat, yin has cold properties as shown in the table, you can speculate easily the qualities of yin and yang. Next slide, please. And also I, our organ have yin and yang quality, such as we classified hollow organs into yang organ, including gallbladder, small intestine, triple jowl, stomach, large intestine, bladder. Yin organ is solid organ, including liver, heart, pericardium, spleen, lungs and kidneys. So this organ is connected to the meridian. So based on meridian chi, the organ functions actually happened. Next slide, please. So we can see the uh, similar system in our Western medicine theory, such as autonomic nervous system. As you can see, our sympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system are antagonistic each other, like yin and yang. So parasympathetic nerves like, uh, you know, act like yin and sympathetic nerve act like a yang. Okay, next slide, please. So antagonism is, is an important balancing system. When sympathetic nerve system is activated, parasympathetic nerve system become inactivated vice versa, like the uh, scissor theory. Next slide, please. Okay, now let's talk about today's topic, acupuncture. What is acupuncture? When you watch acupuncture treatment, doctors insert a very tiny needle into the acupuncture point. You may be very, very skeptical or wondering how acupuncture can cure disease by simply inserting a tiny, tiny needle without delivering any medication to the skin. This is because acupuncture regulates flow of chi of the meridian in our body. Next slide, please. So some people have needle phobia or some people worried about side effect. You may have a soreness or pain during treatment after acupuncture, some people feel tired, dizzy, dizziness, lightheaded, and sleepiness. This is a pretty normal reaction to the acupuncture treatment. But there is a, some side effect you can have, like infection after acupuncture, pneumothorax. That's very dangerous. So infection and pneumothorax uh, actually, I could say, you know, doctors malpractice. I have a one phenomenon, uh, one story of a pneumothorax case. A few years ago, a German shepherd admitted our clinic because of breathing difficulties. <clears throat> the 
Fiona said that the dog started to have difficult breathing after receiving acupuncture treatment at a local clinic a few hours ago. I recommended urgent cardio cardiology care, but the owner went back home without treatment. I was told that the dog died in a few hours later. I think a pneumothorax has occurred because a needle inserted into the lung. Next slide, please. So many people wonder in what cases or diseases acupuncture can be applied. Acupuncture has been acknowledged as an effective medical option for some diseases as shown in slides based on scientific research and was approved by the FDA in 1996. However, I think acupuncture can be applied to most of diseases disorders, except if there is a broken bone or you know, a little bit of exception too. Okay, next, next slide. Okay, now let's switch gears. I will talk about four cases whom I have treated at BMC. Next slide. Okay, there are several techniques for acupuncture. Here I will briefly explain the three techniques I use most. First one is body acupuncture. Most traditional Chinese medical doctor or traditional Korean medical doctor, they use this one. Around more than 90% of doctors use uh, body acupuncture. Veterinary acupuncturist also, they use body acupuncture. The body acupuncture is um, in the body acupuncture, selection of specific acupuncture point is based on a syndrome-based diagnosis. There are 354 acupuncture points on the 14 meridian in our body. So when you have a you know, syndrome diagnosis, you need to select based on the, uh, the symptom or signs because each of 354 acupuncture point has its unique indication and functions. For example, if if patient has a headache, a lot of doctors or some, sometimes, you know, lay people knows which point they're gonna use that. The main point will be large intestine four, which is located here. Because this point is known as an empirical point for pain. But traditional Korean constant medical acupuncture does not use that way. This acupuncture theory actually emphasizes the strength and weakness of the meridian state. The meridian state is very important. Then once you just you know, know that the meridian state is strong or weak, for example, if somebody has you know weak uh, stomach meridian, that means that they could have the, a little bit of um, too much dampness then we need to actually tonify the stomach to dry the dampness. So we're not just to say that, oh, where is the pain and just select the pain point. We need to know that why this patient has a pain, which meridian has the actually involved to make this pain. So for example, if somebody has a pain, it could actually caused by the stomach meridian imbalance or gallbladder or large intestine was uh, lung or liver. So we should actually pinpoint which meridian is actually imbalanced. Then once you just find it, we can just you know select the point. So there are huge differences between body acupuncture and constitutional acupuncture. The third one I use I use a lot for musculoskeletal problem, you know, patient, electroacupuncture. Electroacupuncture is a form of acupuncture in which a small current flows between two pairs of acupuncture needles. This technique can provide stronger stimulation than body acupuncture or hand 
acupuncture and is very effective for musculoskeletal neurological conditions. So for example, if we just put the needle and try to have a strong stimulation with the hand manipulation, the maximum we can have two milliamps. But if we use electroacupuncture, we can have up to 100 milliamps. And then also when you just you know, manipulate with the hand, the needle, the patient actually feels pain. But electroacupuncture actually, we don't just you know, manipulate the needle. Neither is just stay there, just the electro, just you know, electric uh, power get into the, uh, through the needle. So they feel a um, little bit less pain than by the acupuncture using the adjusted uh, needle. Next slide, please. Okay, the first case is nasal adenocarcinoma case. A seven and a half year old male noodled boxer, so several doctors for chronic rhinitis prior to visit our service. They look for an alternative medical care because they spend a lot of time to figure it out, to fix this condition. But even though the diagnosis is chronic rhinitis, he did not actually, you know, completely cure. He has, you know, symptoms for many years. For chronic rhinitis, acupuncture is very effective. So um, I provided body acupuncture. After two to, two to three days later, I got a phone call because he suddenly began to develop very severe nosebleed. That instance made, made me suspect of this is not a chronic rhinitis. So I requested CT scan. As you can see right corner, the CT scan, when I look at that, it was awful. The tumor in the left nasal cavity invaded to the right nasal passes and even to the frontal brain. Next slide, please. So Western medicine diagnosis is a nasal adenocarcinoma. Traditional medical diagnosis was lung and gallbladder imbalance with a gallbladder hit. Since one time of acupuncture made a huge problem, so I give up to give uh, acupuncture. I started only over medicine and food therapy based on his constitution. In conclusion, he lived a healthy and quality of life five and a half more years. Finally, we decided to euthanize him because he started losing a lot of weight and lack of appetite with low energy. So we wanted CT scan, but the owner just allowed us necropsy. Histopathology actually revealed that the tumor of the frontal um, area, brain area disappeared. And we also find that trace of mucinous cystic adenoma and fibrovascular stroma in the nasal cavity, cavity where existed. This is the uh, benign tumor, not a malignant. So this is a good example showing that body acupuncture can make cancer worse. Next slide, please. The following is a case of gastric adenocarcinoma. A eight year old male intact Irish setter was admitted to an emergency clinic for severe vomiting blood, lethargy and fever. After several tests and the result of endoscopy and histopathology concluded he has gastric adenocarcinoma. With the surgery and chemotherapy, chemotherapy is the uh, some options. And even if uh, with that, the prognosis was about six to nine months of survival. 
the owner refused all Western medicine treatment and she asked us medical care for the dog. Traditional medical uh, diagnosis was the stomach heat and body fluid deficiency. In this case, we only provide over medicine because you know the, uh, they live in far away. So it's very hard to visit to have the uh, acupuncture frequently. So I prescribed the fresh herbs containing leaves and barks and roots. And I ask owner to cook it and she just cook it home and make a concoction. And we gave this concoction him twice a day for several months. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. This is, uh, these are the upper endoscopic picture. Top one is an endoscopic picture at the time of hospitalization. As you can see in this picture, there are small erosions in the gastric wall and uh, angular region along the lesser curvature was thickened and fresh hemorrhoids, blood clots and tumors were detected. The picture below is endoscopy for two months of treatment. As you can see, inflammation hemorrhage was significantly reduced and the tumor cells were shrunk. We kept treating this dog one more month before they moved to Arizona. I sent three more months worth of herbs when they left. The owner sent us his healthy and happy life picture every year. Besides that, uh, after we just treated the 10 days after, uh, his uh, clinical signs is all become normal. And uh, survivor, he's just a survivor time is slightly over four and a half years, long term four and a, you know, so this is really good outcome. Even though we didn't give the acupuncture only over medicine, we can just, you know, manage the uh, um, cancer, but at the time, we can just, you know, prescribe the uh, real herbs and, uh, you know, owner actually agreed on cook, you know, every day for her dog. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is the case of oral, oral fibrosarcoma. A nine-year-old Melnudel Golden visited to the primary care service his cleaning at the time, our clinician found he has not only gum disease, but also oral fibrosarcoma. Unfortunately, I was bored. So I was not at the, you know, uh, my office. When I came back, it was already more than two months after the initial diagnosis. Since the owner declined the uh, surgery and wanted to have our service, I started traditional Korean constitutional acupuncture twice a week for a while. As I mentioned earlier, I don't want to just give the body acupuncture because we know that might, you know, cancer get worse. So according to the constitutional medicine diagnosis, the spleen and the large intestine imbalance was the original cause of the cancer. Next slide, next slide, please. So I gave a constitutional acupuncture treatment for three months, but uh, there was no significant improvement. So I advised to the owner to stop the uh, treatment because we don't get a you know, good outcome. The cancer was not actually uh, worse, but it's not getting better either. However, the owner encouraged us to continue giving acupuncture without worrying about the cost. So I can continue to acupuncture treatment for almost one and a half years. This is the longest, you know, acupuncture treatment for one dog in my, you know, career. 
In the meantime, I did over treatment here and there six months after acupuncture treatment. Okay. Next slide, please. Can I see? Okay. This is the chronological changes in facial swelling. As shown in the photo, his facial swelling started to change around six months after acupuncture treatment. As shown in picture E, uh, this you know distinct facial changes actually started after eight months of acupuncture treatment. As shown in figure F and G, his facial swelling returned to normal after nine months of acupuncture treatment. Next slide, please. This slide is a chronological changes of tumor lesion as shown in figure A. You can see a large tumor on the upper gum. Some changes occurred around six to seven months after acupuncture treatment, which is shown in figure B. You can see the uh, uh, small necrosis vision, which is actually shown white spot. The tumor region begins to more necrosis over time. As shown in figure H, the necrotic tumor fell off naturally. This is the power of constitutional acupuncture. Next slide. Okay, let now let's change topic from cancer to spinal disc disease case. This is the case of inovarable disc diseases. Around 13 years old, male neuter domestic short hair cat was admitted to our service for IVDD. According to MRI, he had IVDD in several areas of the spine, indicating that surgery was not a proper medical option. And what is worse, he took a uh, steroid, but a steroid, steroid did not help at all either. That's why the owner brought him to us. But I always wish I could see the patient when there is a little bit of room to treat. He could not stand even a second. I told the owner that if he could stand even two seconds, after the first acupuncture treatment, I could provide acupuncture treatment after then. Otherwise, I should give up. There is no hope. So we gave electroacupuncture first time. We are lucky enough that he stood exactly for two seconds after the first acupuncture. So I promised to the owner. So after that, we gave um, electroacupuncture once or twice a week for many months. Okay, next slide, please. Can I see? Okay. So now let's see the outcome. Kasi, would you just please start video clip one? Okay. The first clip is the after three uh, third acupuncture treatment. As you can see in the clip, he just is sitting. Yeah, he can just have one or two steps. He, he did not do that. He could not do that first time he came. He couldn't even stand. So we have a little bit of improvement, okay? Let's have a second clip. This is after the sixth acupuncture treatment. Showing he can stand longer, more than two seconds. And he can take even more steps.
Okay, Cassie, can I have the last clip? Okay, this is the after two and a half month of acupuncture treatment, electroacupuncture. As you can see, his gait improved by over 80%. And the owner told us she saw him running at home often. So as can be seen here, electroacupuncture is an effective medical option for IVDD. Thank you, thank you for listening. Now I'm ready to answer your question. Thank you so much, Dr. Choi, for the great presentation. It is wonderful to learn more about acupuncture and how it can help our pets. So since you're ready, let's jump into some of the participants' questions. Uh, the first one that I have is can more than one problem be treated at the same time with acupuncture, such as pain in a neurological issue or a muscular and neurological issue? Yes, of course, especially when you give a constitutional acupuncture, we just find out what is the underlying condition. Most of the cases uh, in a warm body, when you have a different kind of uh, clinical signs and symptoms, and it's all connected, so um, it's all related, which is a little bit different concept from Western medicine. Western medicine, you know, one patient has the allergy and the vomiting or um, coughing or whatever, then we should, you know, see the uh, all different uh, sectionize that, you know, we should go to the dermatologist, you know, pulmonologist or, orthopedic, you know, doctor, but in traditional medicine, we just try to find out the, uh, what is the root condition. Once you just uh, treat the underlying condition, of course, we should, you know, address the uh, clinical signs too, but once you just treat, treat the underlying condition, you can see the good outcome all related clinical symptoms. So actually, when one patient has a different kind of clinical symptoms, the constitutional acupuncture is really effective and we can treat at the same time. Yes. Excellent, thank you. The second question I have is, if my cat seems healthy and is experiencing no problems, would acupuncture occasionally be beneficial? Theoretically, yes. <laughs> You know, acupuncture is always help, no matter, you know, you're sick or not. And, uh, um, you know, in Korea or China, if somebody are rich, they just go to the acupuncturist periodically. And when I was in Korea, and as the uh, actually externship, I saw, it's a human, you know, clinic. I saw around the 60 to 80 patients per day. The reason we have so many patients, because in Korea, uh, age over 65, acupuncture is free. So, so elderly people, elderly people comes almost every day. And so, you know, when I just look at them, they are younger than me because they have acupuncture every day. So yes, healthy people, you know, healthy cats or healthy animals, we can give acupuncture, but usually cats are very stressed to kind of external stimuli. So I only see the uh, very few cats receive acupuncture, you know, gently, but most of cats, they are stressed, you know, stressed by acupuncture. So I don't want to just to give a stress because they don't have any you know, medical conditions. But there is some other way we can help. So it's, I already told you, um, acupuncture or traditional medicine is a preventive medicine. So everybody has a, some imbalanced constitution. You know, so we can just do, you know, find out what is this Pet's constitution, even there is a no medical science clinical symptoms. So once you just know the constitution, we can provide food therapy. Okay, somebody was born like, you know, 
uh, cold condition in deficiency. What are you gonna do in Western medicine when you go to the doctor? I feel cold, you know, even summertime, I feel, you know, chilly. What are they gonna do? They don't do anything. Oh, you know, we're more close, but in traditional medical doctors say, oh, you feel always cold? Then you have maybe too much in or you don't have enough young. And so we just prescribe, for example, okay, you better have a, you know, ginger tea every day, or you can have a, you know, um, like a warm food. Like you better have a more, you know, red meat or don't eat your too much cold food, something like that. So we are actually, you know, managing the uh, constitution, then they can actually keep the good health conditions. So in this question, yes, theoretically good, but practically maybe a little bit too harsh. We can have some other way to, you know, keep the good health, such as, you know, food or herbs. So I think suggest that way is better. Excellent. Those were great examples. Thank you. You mentioned constitution several times throughout the presentation and just in the last question. So this one asks, can the constitution of an individual, dog, cat, or even human, change from winter to summer? Okay. And I explained that there is a two different types of, you know, constitution. One is two different types of chi, and one is prenatal chi and postnatal chi and also prenatal essence, postnatal essence. So pre prenatal chi and prenatal essence is the uh, innate constitution. And the postnatal chi, postnatal essence are acquired constitution. So innate constitution, you cannot change. It's always from the day zero you born to the end you go to the, you know, tombs, it's the same. You keep that because you you got that from your parents. It's a gene, it's a DNA. So there is no way you can change it. But the acquired constitution, which is actually you just build up based on your you know innate constitution. So somebody just you know have a in deficiency or young deficiency, for example, young deficiency, you feel cold, but they are living in Alaska. It's a very cold area. It's not good for them. So they just to develop some kind of, you know, um, conditions. Sometimes they have some asthma or they have some medical conditions. In their case, they just to change the, um, like, um, uh, acquired constitution. Acquired constitution, you can be changed it. But when you just, you know, this is a, a little bit of um, interesting questions. Is change or not? Changing is good or not? Sometimes we just, you know, have a protective way of change. Like, uh, um, you know, dog shedding hair. Why is that? It's kind of, uh, you know, changing the, uh, whether they can have the shedding hair, for, it's a kind of protection mechanisms. If that is not a disease, or winter time it comes, we just put more in you know, effect because we're gonna protect from the cold weather. Look at the tree. Winter time comes, they all just fall the you know, leaves to survive that. But if they don't do, they die. So the acquired constitution change it for survive. It's a surviving kit, but constitutional, you know, innate constitution never change it. So I, I think if somebody just, you know, try, somebody has a problem not have the uh, changing or the dog cannot change the uh, um, well, enough to the weather or something like that, we can just to provide us some help. Okay, you know, winter time, we put the, you know, you know, coat and we put the some, you know, socks or something like that when you go out for work. So um, 
depending on the uh, constitution, they cannot actually have a strong protection mechanism, then we should actually have that. Sometimes people can change or, you know, um, animals can change easily, but some, some, you know, animals cannot do that, then they need uh, some help. Thank you. The next two questions are kind of more um, symptom based. Um, so it's this one is can acupuncture help relieve severe allergies in dogs that have been treatment resistant? Yeah, in most cases, yes. As I mentioned repeatedly, Western medicine actually treat the uh, clinical signs and symptoms. So um, if we stop the uh, treatment, sometimes the symptom comes back. That's why we keep giving the uh, treatment once there is allergy or something like that. The allergy, you know, constitutional allergy, not the, you know, uh, acquired allergy. Acquired allergy, we can treat, and then we can just uh, have the uh, good outcome using the Western medicine too. But constitutional, you know, causing, constitutional problem cause the, uh, you know, allergies, no matter what, once you stop treating, the underlying condition is, was not addressed, they just keep having a, you know, clinical signs. So um, in this case, traditional medicine actually help because we can just find out, oh, your dog is itching, colitis. And uh, what is the cause of that? So in Western medicine, uh, diagnosis is colitis, itching, but Eastern medicine, traditional medicine, constitutional diagnosis, oh, because your dog has a deficiency of lung, lung chi is deficient because lung chi actually supporting our, you know, uh, skin and they actually control the uh, pore, the sweat pore, and also they distribute the moisture to the skin. So if lung chi is not strong enough, they just, you know, itching, having a pruritus. So we should provide the treatment to strengthening the lung chi. So with the medicine allergy, you know, pruritus, they wanna give us some, you know, medicated shampoo or sometimes, you know, they give us some medicine like, you know, steroid or something else. But it's the medicine is, um, okay, lung chi deficiency make an allergy. We don't treat any allergy in this case. We just treat the underlying condition, how we can boost in the lung chi. Then the outcome is actually, you know, a lot better. But when there is a lung chi deficiency, have the pruritus, the dog or animals patient gonna have the, some other conditions caused by this lung chi, okay? So maybe, you know, every morning or my dog actually have a hacking cough. Then once you just treat the lung, lung chi, strengthening lung for treating the allergy, but at the same time, we can actually make a hacking cough better. Excellent, thank you. Okay, okay. The next question I have is, can you explain the relationship of pulse and chi? Pulse and chi? Pulse? Yep. Pulse, yep, exactly. <laughs> That's a really um, interesting question, but uh, it's, it's so difficult to explain. Okay, I'm going to just uh, make a short answer here. It takes a long time if we just uh, start from the chi and pulse. Okay where I can start. So our body actually make um, post-natal chi every day, okay? So that's why I told you. We eat the food, the food, air, combined together, make a chi. So people just think, oh, food is only make our energy. It's not without air. Air actually contains universe universe chi. Without universe chi, we cannot make any, you know, postnatal chi. So air comes in and the food actually spleen, uh, stomach actually, you know, receive the food, the spleen transform the uh, 
put it to nutritious matter, and then it goes to the lung. And the lung actually combine the air and make uh, this one to the uh, uh, chi. And then they send this one to the heart. And by going there, and I told you the prenatal chi from kidney and come help this one to make a, you know, good chi. So they just combine together zhong chi, we call that zhong chi, go to the uh, heart. And then heart start to, you know, learning the blood. When the uh, blood circulate, the chi goes, but this chi actually have all our body chi contains. And then what we are gonna do in human case, we actually check the radial artery, okay? So once, you know, the circulate of blood goes to whole body, we check that this one, we can actually see the meridian's state, which meridian is strong or weak. So in human cases, once you just put the, you know, finger to check the pulse, we can see, oh, your lung chi is weak, your stomach chi is strong. Even though in a one person, we can actually, you know, palpate and diagnose which meridian, which organ is weak or strong. So it's connected because the blood actually convey the, our whole body chi. That's why the chi and the pulse are really strongly related. So the doctor, sometimes, you know, traditional medical doctors, they ignore, modern medical doctors, you know, they ignore the pulse. And that's so sad because this pulse, pulse checking, actually checking our whole body chi in the meridian. So that's really important. When it comes to the, you know, uh, small animal, we don't have that kind of system. So we just usually check the femoral artery, you know, and then we just see the general gene, not just, the, you know, divided, separated, like, you know, 12 organs and 12 meridians. We just look at the, oh, you, this, you know, this dog has a little bit of weak chi. Then after that, we should find out where is the weak chi? Which organ has the weak chi? And there is another way we can just, you know, um, see by exam, physical exam. Then we can just find out, yeah, your dog has, you know, weak pulse. And so it indicates weak chi. And based on other way, we can find out, oh, your dog has a weak chi in the gallbladder or lung, so we can actually, you know, diagnosis based on that. So chi and pulse, you cannot segregate. That's very interesting. Thank you. Another question that we received is, are there traditional medicine treatments for behavioral problems? That's really interesting question. Yes. Yes. Okay. So for example, the dog has the, uh, um, like, uh, for, uh, what is the best example? Scared to the, you know, lightning, thunderstorm, okay? Or separation anxiety. What are you gonna do in Western medicine? You know, we're gonna just give us some medication or sometimes we just, you know, ask, okay, let's have a thunder shirt, make a little bit of, you know, cuddly. How long, how much, and what kind of effect we can have. All kind of behavior, whatever, animals, humans, there is a reason why, because each organ, okay, for example, the lung, we, each organ has a, some emotion. Like a lung is actually worry, kidney fear, you know, 
heart joy. So in Eastern medicine, actually, each organ has its own emotion. So for example, if uh, you know the dog or human have a little bit of you know fear, so they don't have the uh, um, very uh, sparkling reaction to the uh, certain um, stress, then it's gonna be just you know showing the behavior. We can find out which organ has the uh, uh, weakness or problem. Well, for example, good example is somebody always just angry, shouting. And this is angry is related to the liver or gallbladder. So we just, you know, figure it out, oh, he or, you know, she might have a liver or a gallbladder chest stagnation. And we just check that, you know, pulse or really that is, if there is a gallbladder or liver chest stagnation, some other clinical signs or, you know, behavior signs, we can have that. So we can just uh, treat that. We don't treat the uh, anger. We don't treat the, uh, um, for example, ADHD, ADD. We don't want to just to try to the behavior calm down. You know, child has ADD or ADHD. We should find out what is the cause. A lot of cases we found the heat in the heart. So we can just, you know, clear heat from the heart. The child become relaxed. I have, you know, a um, good case of horse. I got a phone call a long time ago. The horse is always, you know, circle, you know, one, one direction and then you know very skinny and they try to you know uh, fix this one but there is a no way they do so one direction all the time suckers so they thought maybe some you know brain there is a, some tumor in the brain so they did the mri there is a nothing happened when i checked that he has add that means he has a heat in the heart. So what I did, I gave the acupuncture clear heat from the heart. Couple of times of acupuncture, he doesn't do suckers. He just walks straight. So the, in this case, behavior is a really good candidate for traditional medicines, especially constitutional medicine because we just know that what is the uh, uh, underlying condition make this behavior. Behavior is not separated from the uh, our underlying condition. We need to actually find out what underlying condition. Once you just find out the underlying condition, the treatment is uh, straightforward. Thank you. I really, that was a great story with the horse. Thank you for sharing. I think we have time for one more question, if that's okay. And it's come up a few times. Um, does acupuncture work well on arthritis and or pain in dogs related to muscle loss? And how long would the effects typically last? First of all, acupuncture is good for the arthritis. As you know, you already see the uh, my last you know case, the IBDD case. It's a more extreme case. The electoral acupuncture actually helped. Is a simple, you know, arthritis is actually really, you know, um, effective by acupuncture. And the acupuncture is actually, I told, told, and put the needles. What the needle does? Once you just put the needle where the meridian is, you know, imbalanced or affected they actually stimulate, regulate the chi floor. What is the chi does? Chi is just flowing? No. They bring the uh, some nutrient to the affected area. So based on, you know, uh, because of the arthritis, if there is uh, some muscle, you know, atrophy. And, you know, what you did, what you need to do in Western medicine, okay, we should give more protein and we should have, you know, physical therapies and they should walk around. But if the chi is stagnated, cannot deliver, you know, proper nutrient to that area, no matter how much you did, you have a very little effect. 
So once you just to know which meridian is not working, we put the needle, then this chi delivered, you know, uh, necessary nutrient to the affected site. So actually we can have a fast recovery of the muscle, you know, weakness or, you know, atrophy. Well, sometimes the, you know, pain too, you know, there are so many arguments the research paper about the pain, how acupuncture actually alleviate the pain based on the, you know, scientific evidence, we just provided that. Excellent. Thank you. Unfortunately, that's about all the time we have for questions tonight. But I would like to thank Dr. Choi for your presentations and insights. And thank you to our many participants that shared such thoughtful questions during the presentation. As always, the Veterinary Medical Center is here for you 24 seven to help care for your pets. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Next month, the VMC Animal Health Education Series will welcome Dr. Antonella Bargatti, an oncologist at the VMC whose presentation on soft tissue sarcomas will be discussed. We also invite you to learn more from our veterinary medicine team by signing up for Dr. Jaime Modiano's headliners talk on February 4th, run by the College of Continuing and Professional Studies. We will share the link in our follow-up email, or you can visit their website directly. If you enjoyed learning about our team's work tonight, we encourage you to visit our website or reach out to us directly to learn more about our mission to improve the health and well-being of animals and people. We hope you will consider supporting our team and the work we do to serve animals. Thank you again for attending tonight, and we hope to see you next month. Thank you.